Okay, hey everybody. So one of the classes I teach is story development for interactive media. And one of the assignments that I give my students in that class is to make a game with Bitsy. And I'm not really a Bitsy expert, but uh, I try to at least learn the ropes enough to help my students accomplish what I'm going to ask of them. And one of the questions that came up is how do you make um, conditional dialogue. So dialogue that's based on variables. So I'm going to try to make like a super simple uh, test project that demonstrates that and uh, maybe show a couple things I've noticed along the way. Um, and maybe I'll make some more of these videos later if I continue to learn more about Bitsy. We'll see. All right, so first thing I'm going to do in order to test quickly I'm going to make my title like nothing because otherwise when you hit play you have to listen to the title and since I might need to be iterating you know rapidly here like if I have a bunch of stuff in the title you see you have to wait for that to get done and I don't want to wait for that to get done so I'm just going to delete everything here where it says title. Uh, next uh, also to help test quickly I'm going to click on my avatar and I'm going to put them right under the cat. Oh, I guess my game is running. That's a super common gotcha I've encountered as I've been experimenting with Bitsy is leaving it running. <laughs> uh, you can see that like even though I deleted the dialogue here, I did that while it was running and now everything is just kind of broke. Uh, I'm not sure the best way to fix that. I Maybe if I press that. Yeah, see, it's just really messed up. How do I fix it? I clicked inside, I clicked out, and now let's try it. That worked. So just uh, be aware of that and how sometimes your changes won't really take effect if it's uh, playing. And then it can seem like it's changed and you ac actually have to like click in and click out to get it to work. All right, so now that it's stopped, I'm going to move my character right here below the cat so I can really quickly talk to the cat. And then the next thing I want to do just click on the sprites here. Uh, I really like this fine drawing panel, which if you don't have it open, you go to tools and then you click on fine drawing. Uh, I could see how this is going to be essential if your project gets any like decent length at all. Anyway, I'm going to duplicate the cat. Uh, so if you click on the cat sprite and then duplicate it, and then I'm going to modify it real quickly to just kind of look different. So we'll make him supposedly a dog. This one looks like a dog, right? And we'll name him dog. <laughs> Pixel art is not my forte, uh, but luckily the cat is pretty similar to a dog. Okay, so let's make the dog's dialogue a little bit different. Now, one of the reasons I like this fine drawing thing it's because it's super annoying to like toggle through all of these to find the one you want. I don't know why there's not a drop down. Maybe there is and I'm just missing something. But this is silly. Like once you start to get a lot of dialogues, that is not going to work. But what I've noticed is that you can click on a sprite. And you can see the sprite has a link to its dialogue right there. So if I click on the dog, I can either just edit the dialogue here. So I could just say I'm a dog. Or uh, the other thing I've noticed is if you click this button, you'll see it It automatically opens it in the dialog editor. So if I click on the cat and then I click on that, boom, now I have the cat dialog. So to me, this gives me a much faster way to find dialog than to go one by one through this huge list. Um, so well, I guess it's not huge yet, but it could be especially if my project grows. So my cat says I'm a cat. My dog says I'm a dog. I need to place the dog somewhere. I'm just going to put it there. So now I can hit play and really quickly talk to the cat, really quickly talk to the dog. Remember to stop the game. And now I guess we can start on the conditional stuff. So this is really confusing too. I love Bitsy because it's seemingly very simple. Uh, and it's like a it's like almost like a, a poetic form of game development because of all the constraints and the rigid format. Um, 
but <laughs> there are some issues that make it kind of a pain like not you know having to click through all this a bunch well there's like a little quirk with how the variables work that I don't understand either. Uh, so if you click on, um, well, let's see, how do you get to this even? Is there a variables thing here somewhere? I thought there was. Uh, oh, it's it's in inventory. Okay. So if you go to the inventory tab, if you again, if you don't have a tab open, you have to open the tools and click on it. There's also this thing called variables. First of all, it confuses me that I can't just add a new item right here. That frustrates me. Um, I've learned that the way to do that is you have to go over here to the sprites paint section and then make the thing and then it'll show up here. So that's how you actually add a new item. So you have to start by painting it. Variables, uh, I can add variables. So, or I can just define one. I see, I, I guess I get one called A that has a value of 42 for some reason. Um, so that's cool. Like I can make a variable here. I'm going to call it has talked to dog. And I'm going to start it at zero. And like this is frustrating because it's too small to read and I can't, as far as I can tell, resize this, so that irritates me too. But anyway, um, I don't think you really need to actually use this too much, except for maybe for debugging, and I'll show you why in a sec. So let's go over to our dog dialog. So if we go back to sprites, I click on my dog, and I'll open my dog dialog, and I'm going to click. So if you click this show code thing, it opens this like code editor. And I'm going to make this change the value of has talked to dog and set it to one. So when you talk to the dog, it says that uh, we can kind of track that by setting this from zero to one. So basically like a zero is, is false and a one is true kind of situation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use curly brackets and I'm going to say has talked to dog. Uh, and I want to set it equal to one and close curly brackets. So if you're not used to coding, you know, generally if you're going to have an open parenthesis or curly bracket, you want to have a close parenthesis or curly bracket. And the other big thing here is try to avoid making variables named things like a, that's really bad. Make them named in a way that makes it super clear what it is. So this is going to uh, essentially like our variables that are related to true or false, like our Boolean variables, we want to name them like the answers to yes or no questions. So it's like has talked to dog, yes or no. So it, that way when we start reading our code, it'll kind of be more clear and human readable. Um, so if you add this little bit and then you click hide code, you'll see that it has Secretly, Bitsy has this nice like variable support in the GUI interface, but there doesn't seem to be like a great way to do that. Oh, maybe there was here. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. So I guess I could have also hit set variable count and then changed it like that. So that works pretty easy. You don't even really need to use the, the code thing uh, like I did. In fact, I don't know if I delete it, let's just add item and variable actions, set variable value, and I clicked it and then I can click this drop down, which is what I wish they had for the dialog, and I can set this to one. Okay, so that works, and then if I hit show code, it's gonna look exactly how it did when I typed it in manually. So that's pretty cool. Now, another neat thing, when I run the game, um, if I look at that variable, panel I can but I believe this will update in real time so if I talk to the dog you can see that did update to one so that's pretty useful for debugging keep that in mind all right I'm gonna go ahead and stop it now let's deal with our cat and I want to make the cat say something different if you have talked to the dog so I clicked on my cat I'm gonna open the cat's dialog over here 
And let's try starting with the GUI business here. And we can do, well, what I want to do is add, like, if you hit dialogue, it's just like more text, right? What I want to do is make like this, this is all text options also, but they're like more powerful. So sequence makes it so that like you can define several dialogues and each time you talk to the to the NPC, it will like choose the next one in the sequ sequence and then it'll uh, like once you get to the last one, it'll just repeat the last one. Then there's cycle, which once you get to the last one, if you talk to it again, it will loop back to the first one. And then there's shuffle where it picks one at random. And then the one I want to look at today is branching. And so if I hit branching, it, it lets me do it based on inventory, but it doesn't let me do it based on variables. And I don't understand any way to change that in this GUI, in, in this GUI interface. So before I mess anything up, actually, let's just delete everything and kind of click through this one more time so it's really like in its vanilla state. So you click new branching list. And at this point, what I'm going to do is click on show code. And here's where I want to replace item zero, which I guess is the teacup. Um, it's not super human readable because like, I guess it's dependent on the index that like the order that you added these things. But when you're just looking at the code, that's not clear. So I like the variables a little better just because I can give them an actual name and it's not going to be based on a number that I may not understand what it represents. So we're going to say has talked to dog. So if has talk to dog equals one, then we're going to have these three dots are like the text. Um, we're going to have the cat say something like, uh, well, so first, uh, before I do that, let's add some context here. I'm a cat. Uh, and well, okay. Yeah, never mind. So he's a cat. And if you talk to the dog, he's going to say, Oh no, you've betrayed me. And if you haven't talked to the dog, the cat will tell you, please don't talk to the dog. Okay. So I think I did that right, but it's hard to tell. But the neat thing is if I hide the code, there's the secret interface that does seem to support variables, um, including with the drop down. But it's like, you can't get to this unless you start with the code. And so since I don't memorize the syntax, what I normally do is what I just did in the video is I start by adding a branching list and then I hit show code and I change it from being based on an item to being based on one of my variables. And then once you do that, you can hide the code and kind of maybe get a more clear picture of what this is going to do. So if you've talked to the dog, it's going to say, oh, no, you have betrayed me. And if you haven't, it'll say, please don't talk to the dog. Um, but first, before it does any of that, it's going to say, I'm a cat. So I think we can just test it now and see what happens. So if I talk to the cat without doing anything, it says, I'm a cat. Please don't talk to the dog. Probably need a space there uh, or even a page break. Um, so... Maybe let's stop it and fix that. Um, so what I've figured out is if you, let's see, hit add, and then you go to dialogue and you hit page break, this like will make the text show up in a, in a, a new dialogue box, which is kind of useful for not just avoiding what I could have just put a space there, but it's kind of nice to like, break up your sentences to control pacing and things like that. So uh, if I look at what that did and show code, all it did is add this PG inside of curly brackets. I don't know what the G stands for there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just put that PG 
like here so that it gives me a new dialog box after this first one and let's see if that kind of looks right yeah so i'm a cat page break and then my branching logic and if i hit play i'm a cat and then we have the new fresh dialog box please don't talk to the dog all right so now what happens if i talk to the dog i'm a dog and now i'll talk one more time to the cat i'm a cat oh no you have betrayed me all right so that is the conditional setup working here I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing. Like I said, I'm not exactly a Bitsy Pro, so I'm kind of working through this as we record. Um, but I will upload this HTML file so that you can download it and, and look at it more closely if you want. Uh, all right. Thanks.